Fitch Chorus. Again, we want to thank John's Brick Oven Pizza, 505 Long Hill Road in Groton, 405-1630 for supplying food for the press box for tonight's game. Fitch will be kicking off. They're dressed in their silver pants with their black tops. Pomperog will be receiving the ball. They're dressed in white pants with white tops. Fitch will be moving from our right to the left. They'll be moving from the field house side of the field to the open end field. Pompera will be receiving the ball, catching it, and trying to advance towards the field house. So as the teams line up, right now I'll turn this over to the best play-by-play -play man in the United States, Mr. Mike McLaughlin. And I got my work cut out because in my mind tonight it's the Atlanta Falcons against the San Francisco 49ers. As for those that don't know, the Fitch Falcons look just like the Atlanta Falcons. Pomerog, the best pro team we could set them up for would be the San Francisco 49ers. So let's yes. see what we got here. We got Henrique deep and Shelvoy deep. They got uh, uniforms like the 49ers in yeah. the helmets like them too, Mike. Yeah. Here let's we go for do. the kickoff. Tristan White's going to kick it away, Mike. The left-footed Tristan White. Going to get a hold of it. Going to be broad down to taken by Frazier. Frazier's going to come up to center. Going to be go by one man. He's open, Mike. He's going to get up to the 45. He's up to the 50. He's going to be brought down and stacked up by the uh, Falcons on about the 44-yard line. But what a great return by number 41, Corey Nattinger. And right up the gut, Murph. The only guy that left to get him, the safety valve, the kicker, Tristan White. He got him, but what a great return. Brings the ball to the Fitch 43-yard line. Yeah, their blocking was excellent. They had a middle return on Came right up the middle with it. Had man-on-man -man blocking their wedge. Did a great job. But we also see that's why they have Tristan White doing the kickoffs. Yes, and Tristan Wright, you did. Held him up. The rest of the Falcons caught up. So I think speed advantage is going to be the Falcons. From the 43-yard line of the Falcons, nobody's ever started in their territory first. Pomerog with it. Pew, the quarterback. Hand off inside to Shelboy. And he's going to go nowhere. He's stacked up by a coast of Falcons. Going to be second down. He might have got back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. We're looking at a wishbone formation that they had there, Mike. With the, with the running back right behind the quarterback and two running backs split off behind them. This team is going to you try to use their quickness, get to the outside, because I think they found out that they're not going to be able to run the ball against the Falcons. 
So Nettinger's in the backfield. He wasn't listed as a starter back there. Nettinger's in the backfield, 41. Few almost trips. He's going to be hounded by Shelton. Shelton and a goal post to Falcons. Let me tell you, the Falcons just pushed Paparok back to their 44 yard line. And Shelton, the sophomore, was unblocked. Mark Shelton shot off the line like he shot off a cannon, Mike. With real purpose, was in the backfield. Quarterback didn't have a chance to move. And that's going to be about a 10-yard loss, Shelton. And, and guys, they come out in a wishbone offense, and we haven't seen that all year, Murph. No, we have not seen that. That That is the kind of dangerous offense when you haven't seen it. They can't hurt you with the option. Well, I would look for the option pass on this kind of situation, but they're in a the wing right now. Double wing T. Pew goes straight back. He drops back. Little pressure. Hall's in there. Pew's going to throw it out for Henrique. He's going to be intercepted. It looks like Rashad Carter, number eight, with the interception. Ball hung up in the air. Murph with Rashad Carter. Looks like it was thrown to him. He camped underneath it like a center fielder the entire time. Intercepted. Falcons to take over on the Pomp Rock 27 yard line. <laughs> Well, Tristan White and the Duke both played the ball very, very well. They broke on the ball while it was in the air, even though it did hang up there. They both broke on the ball, and uh, the Duke made the interception. Let's look for Fitch with some open plays. I remember against Maloney last year, Michael Hall, first two times he touched the ball, 50-yard touchdowns. Good. All right, let's see. Falcons come out tight wing tee. It's like a 5-3 for the uh, thing. Pitch back to Maddox. Maddox running to the left. Maddox has got a first. First down. Maddox has passed the first down. Still on his feet to the 42-yard line. He was a step away, and he had blockers downfield. Maddox is disappointed. Hey, he knows himself that had he kept his balance, he'd have gone all the way. So, I mean, the Kevin Falcons McMahon come right out. joined us tonight after a great Thanksgiving Day game. He took the spot place of Phil Murphy. Big shoes for you to Phil Mack. did a great job. Thanks a lot. Where's the saxophone? First down on the 43 yard line. Saxophone Santa with us. First down for the Falcons on their own 43 yard line. McCoy in motion. Pitch back to McCoy. They're going to test him early. McCoy's going to get inside. Going to get into Pomeroy territory in about the 49 yard line. Second down and two. McCoy looked pretty good there. He certainly did. He ran it up in there tough, as is his usual fashion. Two plays by Fitch Falcons put the ball on the 49 of Pomperuk. They started off this drive. They've gained so far, guys, 22 yards on two plays. Well, you know, Fitch took the momentum away from him right away after that big kickoff return by Pomperuk. The interception, now they're moving the ball back the other way. And they haven't used equalizer yet. Michael Hall right up to Mill. Pitch back to Maddox. Maddox is going to be bounced by someone, fights back, going to get about three yards, and there's Salvoy coming in and nailing him. Salvoy, one of the two people who goes both ways, really hit him. Close to the first down there, Mike. They, uh, they gave it to him, Murph. They got the first down. They mark it off. It's going to be first and ten for the Falcons on the Pomperog 41-yard line. We're just underway, 9.25. Left to play first quarter, no score, but the Falcons are moving. And this is a feeling out process for the Falcons. First down on the Pomperog 46-yard line. McCoy inside in motion. McCoy's going to take the ball to the right side. McCoy's got plenty of running room. McCoy's got a first down. Cuts inside. He's by everybody. He's going to walk in and answer. He's John back. McCoy. He's yard touchdown. And that He's gives him gone. 1,000 yards for the season. 18 touchdowns. I guess he, over the corner street, Bistro fed him pretty good. They certainly did, but let's talk about that run. A beautiful run. He got to the outside. He got by the, the, the end that was supposed to turn him in, Murph. Once he got by him, it was open sale. He cut back in. But did you see the block by Michael, the baby ball hall? He leveled the Pomperog player, and he was real slow to get up on that play. The blocking on the line was tremendous, too. There was no penetration. You could see the play coming because Fitch was on the far hash mark. They only could run back to their right. They're going for two. 
Pitch back to McCoy. McCoy's grabbed his shoulder. Powell was in. It looks like he's going to have it. And he was hit behind the backfield, grabbing his shirt. Paulson, there's any indication he's hurt. And he didn't find it today. Eight for McCoy and the Falcons. Zero for Paparo. And the Falcons strike first. 9.07 left to play. We'll take a break. You're listening to Championship Football on 980 WSUB. We're back to our field. Fitch early, quick, 8 to nothing lead. Murph, nice touchdown run by John McCoy. That was an excellent touchdown run. He just, his speed when he took off in, in motion, you just knew it was coming. Once he got into the into the backfield, he made a nice cut and was gone. Poparov did not have the speed to catch up with him. No little effects on a car accident there. Mike it off. I'll tell you what, he went to the miracle here. Twist in White's going to boot it. It's going to be taken by Nettinger again. We're in the first one back in the fifth turn trace. Goes right up to center again. Gets some good, but he's knocked down on about the 32-yard line. But one thing here, Murph, Pugh had one interception all year. First pass he tries gets picked off here. Well, he did float that one up, Mike, he, and he probably had some pressure on him when he let that go. And Fitch just broke on the ball well. That's, that's really all you can say. Joe and Joe Rashawn with a beautiful tackle. He wasn't blocked out that time, right in the middle of the field. The Pomparo run. They're going to take over in a Fitch 32-yard line. Nine minutes left to play. Fitch leads eight to nothing. And they're in the double wing team. Not as tight as Fitch. They got to flank Enrique to the left. Frazier in motion. Hand off to Frazier. 84. He gets by Hall. Gets by Tristan White. Comes up. Grabs him. He's going to fight. He's being brought down by Maddox. He's going to get about six to about the 38-yard line. Second and four. That's the same play as Fitch runs. Only they run a little bit deeper. Fitch has to get to the point of, uh, of attack faster in order to stop that play. There was a lot of black shirts. Fitch Falcon blocked out of that play, Murph. Twiston White was one-on-one -on -one with the player. If he got by Twiston White, he could have went a long way. So that's quite possible, Ronnie. Let's see what they do. I look for him to come back the other way on this, Mike, because they're okay. on the far hash mark. Double wing T. Rico in motion. Pew with it. He's being hit by Pitt. Maddox. And also, George Hall was there. And that's about a loss. As George Hall flew through there. Only a sophomore. Yeah, Bam Bam got him, had a hand on him, slowed him up, and the rest of the Fitch defense flowed through and nailed him. And <laughs> Bam got him, had a hand on him, slowed him up, and the rest of the Fitch defense flowed through and nailed him. And Tony Caffaro is going to have a heart attack run up and down these stairs tonight. He told me they're going to run that play all night long that they score McCoy. They don't think Pomperol can stop that play, Murph, by the setup they have. You could guess. I they're, think they're probably right. They being the Fitch coaching staff. Shot, shotgun triple receivers to the right. Third and nine. Pew drops straight back. He's looking. He's going to put the ball out underneath. He was looking for Orico, and he was got it by Ian Alon, who had a nice piece of paper done on him today in the paper. Flag up in the air, guys, and the Pomperol quarterback clapping his hand. Something was done. Paul Odo knocked that ball down, too, Mike. Uh, the pass was deflected. Personal, Personal foul. Rapping the pass. Personal foul against the Falcons on that play. That ball looked to be long gone. Well, I'm, I'm very surprised that Fitch didn't get back there a lot quicker. Uh, you know, with four men and four wide receivers out, there's not a lot of people left to block four guys from Fitch. Yeah, well, they picked up a personal foul, which will give Pomperog the ball, Mike, on the foul. Nope, they're still in Pomperog territory at the 47-yard line, but uh, not what Fitch has in mind. Stupid penalties like that, Murph. No, that's not what you want to happen, Ronnie. That is not what you need in a game like this. You got to have consistency and you got to play under control. You only want to stop them once, each time. Okay, double wing tee. Pew hands off to Shalvoy. Shalvoy gets maybe two yards, and he's going to know where center of that Fitch line is. Ismail Bryant and all the rest of those people. Odo, the rest of them just come up. Second and maybe eight. Running right back into the Fitch defensive line. It's good to have. Paul Loto Jr., the odious man, back because he stops a lot of them plays. He's very difficult to block being so quick and so strong, Mike. But we got a second down and eight, as you said, and Pomperog's on the move. And a 49-yard line of their own, 49, eight nuts to pitch. Pew drops straight back. He's being pressured. He's going to step up. He's going to have another one intercepted by Rashid Carter. Carter and Rashid is in the open. He's going, and Mike. Pew is going to be a 55-yard touchdown by Rashid Carter. Rashad Carter, I finally got it right, score touchdown, I'll get it right. Rashad. <laughs> Uh, 
tied up for his mother. The Duke, the Duke picked that off. I'll tell you what, though. The uh, Joe Pugh rifled that ball into the secondary. Rashad Carter did an excellent job of picking it off. Once again, he broke, broke on the ball very quickly. Ran it back. Got great blocking from the defense. Six points. And that's one thing Fitz does after a lot of interceptions. Remember, they kind of get up and look at who to block and who to knock down. They do a good job of that. Well, like I, I told you before, when the ball is intercepted, everyone on the defense yells fire. And that triggers off the defensive turn into offense. DeVoe with the extra point. Good. That's DeVoe's 29th extra point. Rashad caught a second touchdown of the year. 15 nothing Falcons. The second interception. You're listening to ECC Football 980 WSUB. <laughs> Back at door field, Fitch 15, Pomperog 0. A beautiful interception by Carter Murph, but the Fitch pass rush might have had a lot to do with that. Had a lot to do with it. I mean, uh, George Hall and uh, Shelton, uh, Tamar Shelton were all over him like a cheap suit. I think he just rifled it in there. He saw a man open briefly, and the Duke just broke on the ball and ran back on him. Yes. And again, here's a man, Pew, who had one interception all year, throws two passes, both interception, one return for a touchdown. How about this? Fit your offensive four plays, 15 points. <laughs> four plays on offense. They got 15 points. That was the defense has set it up, Mike, yeah. in both instances. Yeah, excellent. Defense scored one, yeah. and defense set the other one up. Tristan White was getting tight, kicking off. Squibs this one. Going to be picked up by Nettinger again. Nettinger is going to come up the middle, going to get up to about... The 35-yard line, that might have been a freak, his first touch, his first run back. Murphy squibbed at that time. The, the Pomperog had pretty good success on the first kickoff and the second one. A, a hole was there. They didn't make it. Do you think the coaches told him to squib it? There's a good possibility of that because he kicked two line drives. And when you kick him that quickly, it really outpaces your, uh, your downfield coverage. So squibbing it slowed it up a little bit and allowed the pitch... Uh, uh, kickoff covers to get down the field and make the play. Well, Popperog has the ball, Mike, on their own 35. They're trailing 15 to nothing, 648 first quarter. Quarterback Pugh's got to be wondering how many guys are out there. Pugh's looking, throws it to Henrique. Henrique goes down, gets the ball. Nice catch. He went down and got that ball, and Pugh threw it the only place that anybody could catch it. Nice catch by Henrique, big six foot four receiver. Gets about eight, second and one. I didn't think that was a catch, Mike. I, I thought that ball skipped on the ground. Murphy's right again. Phil Murphy, they bring it back. The ball did touch the ground. It looked like he caught it right off his shoe tops, which would have been a fantastic catch, but but you can see maybe the ball bounced a little bit first, but they do call it an incomplete pass. And the refs did talk about it. That's, you know what I mean? Yeah, That's a good, good call. Well, anyhow, second attempt is Murphy's right again. That's why he's here. In motion is Arico. Shotgun. Pugh looks straight back. Puts it down the field. He's got Enrique. Enrique is on his hands and knees that time to make sure he gets it, but he's short of the first down, third and short. The very same spot he caught that ball, Murph, but that time Popper had good protection for the quarterback. Yeah, he did, and also he also had uh, C.J. Orico out wide open over here in the right-hand side of the field. Could have gone for real big yardage with this trip formation they had. Yeah, it seemed like he focused on the, uh, that one receiver. If he'd have looked the field over, that could have been trouble for the Falcons. Well, then again, thing. he hasn't had that much time either, Ronnie. Deal with it. Hands off inside to the fullback. Fullback shell boy's going to get maybe a yard. And we want to thank Mike Devine and Comcast TV setting us up. We've got two monitors here, able to watch the game beautifully. He does a great job. He's got his son working with him today, helping him out. I'm telling you what, every week he puts together a better broadcast, and the guy does a fantastic job. And i got to tell you, it's a real pleasure, Murph, to work with a professional like that. No doubt about it. He makes us look pretty good, doesn't he? <laughs> we need more than him, Murph. <laughs> <laughs> First down on 45 for Pomprock. Harikyo <laughs> in motion. Pugh's going to put it out. He's going to throw for Frazier. Carter again, Mike. For the third time by Rashid, Rashad Carter. He's up to midfield. He's going to be broken down on about the 48-yard line. And again, looking for Frazier. They threw the ball. And Rashad Carter, three interceptions. Three. Interceptions, boy, Murphy, he's got a leg up for the Fleet Bank player of the game. Three interceptions, we've not even played eight minutes yet. Well, you know, that was an ill-advised pass. He just kind of let that one go. I don't know if it slipped out of his hand or not. It wobbled a little bit, wasn't really near anybody. Yeah. Once again, Rashad playing center field from his free safety position, just picked it off. Three interceptions, 526 left to play first quarter. Falcons 
15, Pomper Rock 0, Falcons Coral timeout. So we'll take a timeout. You're listening to the only station for ECC football, 980 WSUB. We're back at Door Fields. Falcons take over first and ten on the Pomperog 47-yard line, leading 15 to nothing. See what the Falcons can do. They've had run four plays, got 15 points. Maddox with the ball coming to the left. Good blocks to the outside. Maddox cuts him inside. He's down close to the first down on about the 39-yard line, and I think they can run to the right or the left. They haven't tried Hall through the middle yet, and that's. Oh. No, they, and they haven't tried to double, they haven't tried to cross buck yet either, uh, Mike. That, that reverse cross buck that you call it, Murph. But nice blocking up in front there by John McCoy leading the way. And John McCoy looks good tonight. Shows no effects at all of being injured. Right, second down on the 38-yard line. I'd say look one. for Big John to run to the right this time. Long one. McCoy in motion and then inside. Hand off to Michael Hall. Michael Hall bounces off someone. Bounces, moves it back. Got the first down. Still carrying people down about the 31-yard line. Hall who runs like he's in a pinball machine. That was third down and about one. Hall got about eight yards on the carry. Nice play. Murph says we haven't seen him. As soon as he says it, they give it to him for a nice gainer up the middle. Well, the baby bull is just who he is. The baby bull, very, very hard to stop if you can stop him at all. You know, you can only hope to contain him. You get chances to stop him because he runs right in you. <laughs> yeah, but he butter. likes that though, Mike. <laughs> quarterback, quarterback, hand off to Michael Hall. No! Yes, Michael Hall, he stepped up on about the 30. Could be, yeah, second down and about eight. Got all excited there because I saw me. I'm going to have to watch this monitor more closely yeah. because I'll tell you what, Michael Hall had it. They stood him up pretty good, Shelboy and a few other guys. He got about a yard on the play. Three interceptions so far of the game by Rashad Carter, co-captain, brother of the Fitch quarterback, Raheem Carter, and that's been the story. Fitch 15, Pomperog 0, fourth and counting left to play first quarter. Second and eight from the 30. McCoy in motion. We got somebody jump. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, my, Number my, my. 28 um, for Pomperog came flying in and cleaned the clock of the Fitch offensive guard, Sean Buell, a senior from Pomperog. Uh, clearly going to be a penalty on Pomperog. Uh, for off sides, but Murph, is that what you call a free hit? Yeah, that's what you call a free one. I don't know. I guess uh, John McCoy's motion triggered him off. Thought he was seeing something he didn't see. Automatically scraped to his hole, and uh, he was wrong. Goes from second and nine, Mike, to second and four. From the 25 yard line, McCoy in motion. Hand off to McCoy. McCoy cuts it off inside, and they're ready for that play. And he gets about one yard. It seemed like they were ready for it. And, you know, they could be continually doing that, Murph, and along and along. That just might open it up for the baby bull up the middle. Yeah, I think it will open it up for the baby bull. If that is the key, that's what's going to happen because uh, that linebacker is going to overrun the play and the baby bull is going to run right by him. But then again, knowing the baby bull, he'll probably look for him to hit. See what the Falcons do. He'll run into the linebacker so he can run over him. Third down about fourth and 24-yard line. Pitch back to Maddox. Maddox cuts it up inside. Maddox is still going. He's got the first down, and he, again, he's just tripped up on about the 16-yard line. And he'd been in the end zone a second time. Maddox just tripped up at the last instant. It certainly was. Byron Shalvoy, a junior linebacker, just tripped him up. Murph, or he'd have been in pay dirt. No doubt about it. Shalvoy, one of the two players that Poparog has going both ways. He's getting in a good night's work tonight. Falcons first down on the Pomperog 16-yard line. The Herald Falcons are ahead, 15 to nothing. McCoy in motion, hit off to Hall, and Hall's going to be stood right up. I mean, they were ready for that Hall that time. He got maybe a yard at best. Yeah, he did. There were a host of Pomperog tacklers in there. There were about a half, their, half their defensive team in there making that hit. Well, I think what's happened is the two tackles for Poprock are staying home. Their responsibility is Hall. Well, that's, that's the key to stopping that wing team, Mike. Two disciplined tackles. And well, they're not doing a bad job. They're two pretty good-sized guys, too. Yeah, so they they're, are. They're hanging in. It's second down and nine on the 15. Falcons with the ball. New double wing T. Maddox in motion. Carter's going to 
Roll out to the right. He's, he's open, Mike. Todd is going to run it. Oh. Todd is going to be down nice to the job. first down almost. I think he's got the first down inside the 10-yard line at about the 5. Nice pass rush by Popro, but his brother, Raheem, was wide open in the end zone. Had he saw him, but he had his scramble. He got out of there and murphed it. A nice job. I don't think he ever intended to pass that ball around here. Uh -huh. I think he ran that ball to loosen up Popperog, and Popperog right now might be... Uh, Nicely loosened for anything else coming back inside. Yeah, you might be. He might be right, Mike, because he, uh, his brother Raheem was wide open in the end zone. He really didn't look. Just kept going around court. Nice run though. Gives the Falcons first and goal to go on the six. Two minutes left to play first quarter. Fitch leading 15 to zero. I wouldn't want to be the defensive quarter for coordinator for Pomprog right now. Tristan, Tristan White's in motion. He gets a high snap. He's going to get it. He's going to go into the end zone. And White did all he could to catch that ball. It was a bad pitch. One of the few Carter makes. Tristan White walks in there for his ninth touchdown of the year, 21 to nothing. Tristan the night away White, once again, one of my favorite players. Very nice cut to get back inside and went into the end zone unimpeded. The ball was pitched on his left shoulder, almost went behind his ear, but he flicked it up once, he flicked it up twice, got it in front of him, kept his momentum going the entire time, scores on a six-yard run. Fitch will kick the extra point. DeVoe gets set, looks like it's low to the left. So the kick is no good. DeVoe makes one out of two, but the score with 158. Lonnie in the first period, Falcons 21. And we'll take a break. You'll listen to ECC Football on 980 WSUV. Back at Door Field, minute 58 left to play first quarter. A lot of scoring by Fitch. They lead 21 to 0. Big story, guys. Three interceptions by Raheem Carter. All by the Duke. The Duke has single-handedly controlled this game with his interceptions. One he ran back for a score. The other two set up touchdown runs by Fitch. You know, guys, Pomperog has been known to come back. That has been their mark this year. They're going to get the opportunity. They, they've come back from, from deficits on, on four occasions, yeah. from what I understand, to win games. Although I doubt they've ever seen anything like this juggernaut that's in black and gray before them. All right, let's see what they can do. But they will have the opportunity to come back. I'm Mike. Tristan White. You figured that out by yourself, I too. did. <laughs> it's leading 21 nothing. minute 58, first goal. We got Nettinger and Henrique deep. They squibbed along the ground. Nettinger going to pick it up. Going to come right up the middle like he always does. He gets 28, and boy, was he Woo! dealt by Ian Lalonde and, and Joe, Joe Rashan. Pizza Joe Rashan. Come on, it's Come on, they got rolled up. Who views that rolled up, baby? That's how you hit this one. Joe, Joe Rashawn, gosh, he and Lalon Murph, they just made a sandwich out of that fella. But that squib kick was extremely effective because it took a long time for Pomper to get the ball. You heard of a salami sandwich? You know, it was a salami sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, I want to ask for a question after this play. Is it 21 to nothing? This is a team that only gives up 11 points a game, by the way, uh, Pomper and They've already had 21 scored on them. Pew looks, hands off inside to... No CJ Orukio, and he's going to go nowhere. He's going to get lose two yards at best. Do you think Rashad Carter maybe read all about his brother in the paper over the weekend? No. Breaking all the wreck, you know what I mean, and so forth, and said, hey, I can play too. Come on, a little pumped up. These guys, if you see these guys warming up together, 4.30 every, before yeah. every game, these guys are, are two peas in a pod. They care for each other, and they're both equally happy for what the other one does. I think you're right, Murph. I think uh, Raheem Carter couldn't be happy about the ink his brother's got. The well-deserved ink, too, Mike. All right, man in motion. Peel hands off inside to, uh, looks like it's going to be a Riccio again, and he's going to get maybe back to the 30-yard line. Second down and about third and nine. Yeah, but he don't want to throw the ball because his favorite receiver so far today has been Raheem Carter. But on the play before this, Dave Marner busted through on a beautiful solo tackle on him. And the Falcons are playing tight in the trenches. Well, you know what Woody Hayes said? Three things happen when you pass, and two of them are bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if uh, Pew can complete another one to Carter here, Mike. We'll see what happens. Third and about nine. 39 seconds for first period. Falcons had 21-0. Pew drops straight back. He's getting blocked. 
Hughes going to put it out. He's got Henrique. Henrique's going to have the first down and more. Henrique with a nice catch. Hughes all six foot four. And a nice pass pattern by Henrique Murphy. He went about three yards beyond the first down marker turn and came back and got the ball. But he made sure he had first down yardage before him. Yeah, that's what he did. That's what a good wide receiver will do. Also, uh, Pew had tremendous blocking up front. There wasn't anywhere near him when he released that football. And that's one thing I think the Pompero coaches have told the offensive line. If they want to be in this game, they have to give the quarterback time to throw the ball. Let's see what they do. Pompero first down in their 40. Hand off to Shalvoy. Shalvoy runs over a couple of places. Then he runs into Michael Hall in a stop on about the 48 yard line. He got about eight, second and two. The first one play of the night. That time Tamar Shelton actually ran up field too far. Didn't read back inside where he could have made the tackle after about a yard game. And Raheem Carter also on the tackle. Uh, nice block. And that's the end of the first quarter with the score Fitch 21, Poprog 0. You listen to ECC Football 980 WSUB. Thank you. Let's see what they do. 21 to nothing. Second and two for the Panthers on their own 48 yard line. Few to quarterback. Long count. Few hands off to the fullback, Shalvoy, and Shalvoy's going to get maybe one yard, and there's Michael Hall in the middle of the defensive line for the Falcons. And that's the first play of the second quarter. Fitch leading 21-0. Raheem Carter, three first quarter interceptions. Guys, that's got to be a star record in the state playoff game. Uh, yeah, Rashad Carter, thanks, Murph. I continually to mess it up, and I apologize to both. Rashad Carter, number eight, you know, fantastic. That's got to be a record, though. Three interceptions in one quarter, a state championship game? Yeah, it might be, it might be a, 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 sta a state record for the whole game, uh, Ronnie. Yeah. It might be a pitch record. Who knows? Third down and two. Shout, boy, got nothing. Field quarterback. Hands off to number 28, Balasucci. He's short, Mike. He's going to be short. Balasucci gets up just short of the 50. It's going to be inches at best. Balasucci, they bring it in short yardage, number 28. Going to maybe up to just about the 50. I see where they spot I think it. He's real, real go, close. I think he's got to go just beyond the 50, about an inch beyond it. And it's a short. So it's fourth down territory. They're trailing 21-0. That day being the Pomperock Panthers. And they look like they're going to be going for it. The quarterback is talking to the coach, and he's going to take a timeout. So with 10.40 left to play in the second quarter, as the clock is ticking away, I wonder why uh, it's clock still ticking as the coach is on the field. About 10 seconds have ticked off the clock um, while the timeout was quartered. But in any event, you listen to ECC football on 980 WSUB. <laughs> And one, Pew drops it, and he's going to be hit. Pew gets nowhere. He dropped the center, and all of a sudden, he was surrounded by a mess of Falcons. Falcons take over on a 47 yard. <laughs> there you go, Fitz. There you go, baby. That would have been an excellent opportunity for Pomperov to gain some momentum by picking up a first down in that play, and it did not happen. Driving another nail in the coffin. All right, I got to ask you one question. You always start. Call me Ishmael. First line of the Moby Dick. Who was the first mate on the ship that was chasing Moby Dick? I'll tell you after. No, it's easy. It was Phil Murphy. No, it's, it was me. No, I'll tell you in a minute. It comes with the Fitch thing. 47 yard line. That double handoff to Maddox. Maddox goes outside. Dukes one time gets by some people and is down on about the 35 yard line. First down. What a beautiful run by Mad Dog Maddox Smurf. All over. Boy, can he juke as good as anybody. <laughs> That was a nasty play. That was a deeper handoff than we usually see on that uh, on that cross block there, Mike. It was deeper, but it was smooth, Murph. It was very smooth. McCoy looked like he was going to go all the way around the corner. Yeah, he, he handed it to Maddox and continued with his fake, and we thought he still had it. But we've seen that play too many times. They can't fool us, Mike. No, they can't. First down, they didn't that time. First down on the 35-yard line. Hand up to Hall. Hall's going to run over a few people. He's going to get down to about the 32-yard line. Cross buck is related to the first mate's name. Stop up. 
So the guy that plays for wow. Fetch, number 25. So we got Stop Up, we got Ishmael. I gotta read the book again, but uh, only if it's in Cliff Notes. That's all I can read now. <laughs> and unfortunately, right now, Pop Rose looking like Moby Dick. I made it through high school. And Half a college were up by reading cliff notes. Thank God they invented them. All right, second down and seven on the 32-yard line. 21 and nothing. Falcons are ahead. Double wing T, tight double wing T this time. Maddox in motion. There's that double handoff to McCoy. McCoy breaks off. He's gone. He's got the first off. No, he's not going to go this time. Cause no, they did. They ran ball. right over the That's tackle. The ball, Mike. They ran right over the tackle. And let me tell you, Nettinger had the inside position on him. You can't get a better tackle shot than that. 30 <laughs> Two yards, touchdown, second of the game for McCoy. Well over a thousand yards by anybody's statistics right now. 27 nothing. What a run. And he just bounced. It was like, hey, excuse me. It was like a mosquito. John McCoy just picked his feet up and would not allow the tackler to hit him while his feet were stationary and knocking him off balance. He picked his feet up and ran right through it. Excellent run by John McCoy. Pitch ahead, 27 to 0. Who would have thought at 9 29? Left to play second quarter, guys, and they're going for two. Falcons going for two. That shovel pass, and boy, did they have that defense. Shovel pass to White, and one of the linemen just tackled White down as the ball came. That's all right, Fitch leading 27 to 0. You're listening to ECC Football 980 WSUB. <laughs> And the Falcons lead 27 to 0, 9 29 in the second quarter. And this is just another day at the office for these Fitch Falcons, Murph. Fitch Falcons are on a mission. We said it nine weeks in a row. We're saying it again. They will not be denied until they reach the state championship game and win it. And um, we talked earlier about how 10 seconds had ticked off the clock. And, you know, these referees, they are the state's best. They came over and they told the timer to put to there on top of things, Mike. They put the clock, the time right back onto the clock. I think we forced over Papa Rob, but wish they didn't have the 10 seconds. Okay, Tristan White's going to kick off. Boy, you talk about a squibble. It bounces around the middle of the field. It's alive, and it looks like Papa Rob's going to take over on your own 44-yard line. Yeah, he overcome a little bit that time, uh, Mike hit the ball too high on top, ended up squirting off like a, like an onside kick. Pitch Falcons now have 87 touchdowns. <laughs> 87 touchdowns? touchdowns? Okay. That's only 100 touchdowns less than Jerry Rice. <laughs> 87 touchdowns. They could conceivably get 100 touchdowns this year. Let's see what happens in the 44. We'll play this game first. 27 nothing. Pugh, the quarterback, drops straight back. He's got good protection. Pugh's going to put it out for Henrique. Henrique's going to sprint at the first down line. He's going to get it. He's tackled by Rashad Carter and about the 44-yard line of the Falcons to be first down. Well, Henrique, I mean, Henrique uh, did a good job catching that ball, but Joe Pugh has got a rifle for an arm. Little fellow, but boy, he packs a powerful throw. I bet you he's a pitcher on the baseball team, Mike. Well, if he ain't, he ought to play shortstop. Or a second or catcher, even, with an arm like that. First down on the Falcon, 44. First and 10 for the Pomp Rock Panthers. Inside the Shalvoy, and Shalvoy's going to go nowhere. No. And right there is Paul Odo and Ian Lalonde. And I'll tell you, Odo is pumped, and Lalonde is playing his usual game. Well, you know Odo's pumped after missing Thanksgiving Day. You don't miss turkey games. Turkey Day games without being a little bit down, but thankfully he has another game to play, and now it looks like we don't want to jinx anybody, but heat up that limousine, Joshua. We might be going somewhere Saturday. We're going to a lot of places Saturday. All right, second down, and they lost about a yard. Second down. Second down, about 11, on about the 45-yard line of the Falcons. Puke drops straight back. Look, he's being pressured. He gets away from Maddox, but there's Ian Lalonde. Minor, Mike. Minor, excuse me, and I'll tell you, you know who really rushed him? Number seven. Okay, come flying near the quarterback, Raheem Carter. Yes, yes, he did. There was a run. There was a blitz. They had on the blitz on that time. Man. All out blitz, Murph. Carter was on him. Mad Dog Maddox was on him. And then Miner finally finished him off. But I think what they did, Murph, correct me if I'm wrong, they had a couple of their linemen kind of back up to play linebackers and sent everybody else in. And with the speed of the pitch linemen, you can do that and get away with it. Yeah, they had Odo and, uh, and, and Lalonde as spies and sent the blitz in from the corners. 
Third down, about 18 from the 41 yard line, their own 41 yard line for the Panthers. Pew drops straight back, got plenty of protection. Fakes once and it's to Judge George Hall. Gets away from him. Gonna get away from a couple more. Not He's Maddox. Gonna, gonna get down to about the 38 yard line. Great run to lose only three yards by Pew, and I'll tell you, the judge. George yeah, the Hall. judge was back there. Acted as an executioner. You gotta give Kenny Woods, defensive coordinator, Murph some good kadoos on that call because that blitz shocked everyone, including Pop Rock. They weren't expecting it. Well, that's what they needed, Ronnie, because they had not been getting very much out of their pass rush the last four or five times he threw the ball. They got it that time, Murph. Frank Henrique's got a punt. Gets it off and is blocked by Maddox. Maddox oh. going in. Go with it. He ends on it. Maddox took oh, it right off goodness. his foot. Maddox took it off his foot. He took it off. <laughs> Right off his foot, did not miss a beat, and ran it in. 33 for the Falcons. I can't Zero stop it. I can't. Pinter. I've never seen a play like that before. He set it down upon it. Maddox says, no, don't kick this. Let me have it. Took the ball, grabbed it, and ran in the end zone. Untouched. Falcons I, lead 33 in the Maddox was in there so quick that I don't know if he took it on the guy's drop to kick it, or he took it off the punt. You guys watch. guys watching on Comcast Cable, you're going to get a chance to see this in replay. Yeah. This happens so quick up here, all we can do is try to run back in our mind what we thought we saw. I tell you what, Shelton was in there too. I don't know what happened. But we saw Maddox going in the end zone, making 33. Pitch back to McCoy. McCoy's going to have him grab his shirt, then he can stop McCoy. 35 nothing. I learned my lesson on McCoy. You ain't stopping him unless you gang tackle Mike said it once he was going down, then he didn't. Boy, was celebrating and grotting already. Fitz 35, Pop Rock 0. You're listening to ECC Football 980 WSUB. It's 35, Pomp Rock 0, Mike, they got to be down. They got to be down, and you know, they're down 35, that was the first punt they tried. That was a unique thing, but I'll tell you, when you're down 35, you got the whole hill, the mountain, the valley, everything to go through. They need to just get some first downs. They got to get confidence. Well, you know, Mike, it's a strange thing. These guys probably have not ever been in this position. When they came here tonight, they did not ever expect to be in this position. They're like in the twilight zone right now. They don't know where they are. They don't know what's going on. It's very surreal to them. It's like a Salvador Dali football game. As I watch Rock <laughs> play, I know the team that made the spottest move in the state this year was Mastic to move up to double L. Okay, Tristan White's going to kick it off. Nettinger's going to pick it up and all. George man. Hall. Good night. Nettinger's going to pick it up and all. George man. Hall. Good night. Fumble. fumble, fumble, guys. On the Fitch 25 thinks they have line. it. And Fitz probably does have it. Tyler Walworth had it in his hand, but they're not going to give it to him. No, they're not going to give it to him. Uh, Tyler Walworth had it. He got creamed by. <laughs> The judge, George Hall, went flying down there. Someone tried to block him, but he says, no, nah, takes more of you to block me. I'm getting him. 
knocked the ball loose, but uh, the referees uh, said the ball was down. They'll give it to Pomperog. So Pomperog was trailing 35 to nothing. Who would have thought it in a state semifinal game? Pitch is going to come out like that. Three big first quarter interception by number eight, Rashad Carter, leading the way. Let's see what Pugh's going to do first on his own 27. Trailing 35 to nothing. Pugh hands off to Shalboy. Shalboy's going to spin. Shalboy with a nice run. Got to get about four yards to the 31. But the big thing, Phil, bookend, sophomore defensive tackles. Sheldon about 6'5", 195, and George Hall 6'3", 215. Sophomore defensive ends. They're going to be tough, and you can say what you will. Yes, Fitch's offense is awfully difficult to stop, but it's their defense that has set the tone tonight. You can say that again. Second down about six. Shalboy with a nice run. They're in a single wing team. Few hands off inside to Balasucci, and Balasucci's going to get, oh, excuse me, that's a five. That's why I'm fouled up that there's a running back with a 54 number, Phil. So he must have to report to the referee. Yeah, that's Tom Atanasio, yeah, that's who, uh, who plays defensive end for Pomperog. Yeah, so that's Thomas Atanasio. That's where the problem is. I was wondering how he was running with 54. Okay. Very well. Let's see what Pew does. Hands off to Frazier. Frazier got to go nowhere. He's going to get knocked down on about the 39-yard line. So what we see very simply is unless when, it, when uh, the big guy, number 54, runs the ball, who is, we're going to try to get his name right a couple of times, Atanasio, they're not going much. He's a god defensive end that's running fullback. He must have to report in, right? Say 54 is eligible receiver and stuff? Yeah, he's got to report in uh, when he first comes in every mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. The fifth defense is responding like a pack of angry hornets, though. Every time a Pomperog player has the football. Second 11. Pugh's going to drop straight back. He looks at good time, but all of a sudden it's going to end. And there is Shelton. And Shelton ate him up. Tomorrow Shelton is turning into a premier defensive end, Mike. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, he, he has gotten more sacks in these last five games than he had in the first five games of the season. He's just improving every week. I'll tell you what, he, is, and he never played. I don't think he played varsity football last year at all. I don't remember seeing him play. He's a varsity basketball player last year at 6'5", but I'm telling you, he's just gotten so much bigger, so much stronger, so much confidence that Joe Rashawn basically not can play offense. Well, Tamar Shelton now is known as the Deacon. Well, let me tell you something. He was laying a little bit of a sermon on Pew on that time, and then... Third down and about 25. Akin to Deacon Jones. Let's see what they can do. Pew in the shotgun. High snap. He's got all he can do to get it. George Hall's after him. He avoids him. But he ain't going nowhere. He's going back. He throws in the middle. Maddox has an intercepted by Ian Lalonde. His men downfield. There's, There's all kinds of things happen. There's a flag on the field. Uh, they had men downfield. Flag. Yeah, that's probably what it was. Illegal men downfield. Ian Lalonde with the interception. Legal man down. Yes, that's what it is. Yeah. When you run around like that, you meant to, I guess your lineman must count to figure you're going to throw the ball within a period of time. And when you're running around like that, they always end up downfield. But few had nowhere to go at all. And well, guess what? The Falcons have somewhere to go. They're on the 28-yard line. Well, that's how many interceptions now, Mike? Four, Four. interceptions? Four. And the quarterback has only thrown one, one the entire year. season. With nine touchdown passes. See what the Falcons do. Part of the quarterback, Maddox in motion. Hand off to Maddox. Maddox is going to fight through, squeeze through, going to get about three. And all of a sudden, we're going to get a little bit of activity because some of them pop for our players are really fighting off the blocks a little bit on these sides, away from where the referees are. So I think they got a little frustration there, and they would have deserved. You ride two hours on a bus to be smacked around like this, you get a little bit mad, I guess. Where is Pomperog? Southbury. 
Oh, about that as far is a long as you ride. can get out of this world, I think, in Connecticut. Down Route 84, that is a long haul, man. Just Mike. keep going. I guess the next stop is West Point after that. I don't know. Second down. Next stop is the Pocados. Okay. Hand off inside. The to, uh, excuse me. Well, with the Tristan the night away the night away, excuse me, and that double reverse, he got down to about the 24-yard line. I was watching Michael Hall jump over everybody. I kind of <laughs> got confused a little bit here because he was like he was hurtling. So it's third down, and they maybe got a yard there. Third and about six. I'm sure they're in four-down territory. Here comes Ishmael Bryan and Mike Scott. I think they're going to pass. Could be. Carter has... Not, yeah, I don't think he's passed too much tonight because he, the big play he had was when he ran it. Got I don't think he's throwing him. one pass today, Mike. He tried to shovel on a two-point conversion, but it doesn't count. Okay, he's going to try it this time. Carter runs to the right. Carter's going to go keep it. He's got Maddox open, and it was chipped. It was tipped by big number 66 there for the Pomperoff team. And big number 66 is uh, for the Pomperoff on defense is Stephen Herrick. Got his big paw on that one, so it's going to be fourth down. Because Maddox was as open as you could be. That was a good play by Herrick. Fourth down, about six. He was trying to try a little touch pass to uh, to the baby bull and just just couldn't get it over the outstretched fingers. The minute Fitch slows down, Ronnie comes right back on the headset. Okay, he's not having any of this. I'll tell you that much. He's like the brute, the Connecticut College. He'll have none of this. <laughs> 35 years. Oh, man, the brute. Okay. Stand up quick pass to Michael Scott. No. Michael Scott has caught eight touchdown passes. Stood up nice. That was the first time he's thrown a pass like that all year. Doesn't Scott, plan. perfect catch. First down on about the 15-yard line. <laughs> With a quick slant, the staple of Steve Young to, Joe, to Jerry Rice. Just about a one-step drop back pass. Hit Michael Scott with a quick one on the left side. Scott took it down. Falcons had a fourth down. Now they got a first down. 2.53 left to play. First half, Falcons 35, Paparog 0. And Paparog is run into a buzzsaw they'll never forget. Okay. Cotter's going to go straight back. Fakes, looks it out to the right. He's looking for Shelton. It's knocked down by Henrique. Flag on the field might, might be against Shelton because Shelton kind of grabbed the defender uh, before that. It might be offensive pass interference because that ball could have been picked off. He thought he was a quarterback. <laughs> I going. thought it was the other way around. Uh, so. It's called against Fitch, Murph. Uh, it was on Shelton. Uh, he did kind of grab the guy as he turned around. I kind of agree with the call. But you know what? It's probably a good thing he didn't, guys. Because Enrique had a lot of green. Yeah, he, he, he would have been able to intercept the ball, so that's probably a good penalty by the Fitch Falcons right now. Let's take it down to Dwayne. Dwayne on the sidelines. Uh, Dwayne, what's going on down there? No, Dwayne's not with us right now. There he comes. There he is. Come on, Dwayne. Let's go, Dwayne. Dwayne, we'll wait till the next play. Hey, guys, how you doing up there? Dwayne, we'll wait till... You, listen to these guys on the sidelines, these fish players. They are bound and determined to take this game to the maximum, both offensively and defensively. They are ready to play. They want to play so badly on Saturday, they can taste it already. These guys are unbelievable. They're not going to let up. I feel really bad for Barbara. Back up to you guys. I bet you do feel back from next time. Have your mic ready and ready to go down there, Dwayne. We missed a play. A screen pass was knocked down, Mike. By Anastasio, the big fullback. Why was 54? Anastasio. Um, in any event, there was an inadvertent flag because the referee dropped it, and now he's shaking it off as of no call. And uh, pitch leading, 35 nothing. 2:33 left to play, but they got a third down, guys, in 25 after the pass. Interference call on Shelton. Let's see what they do. Carter with it. White in, drop inside to McCoy. That double inside reverse. McCoy slips. McCoy slips on about the 15-yard line because he's going to make a cut to get a third touchdown. He slipped, but that was the only thing that stopped McCoy was a little bit of slip on the turf because he was at top speed. They did that so good. They handed off from Carter to White to McCoy. McCoy brings it back to the right side. What a run. And Still picked up 14 yards there, Mike. Yes. Actually, he picked up 21 yards. Yeah, only. 
probably attribute that slip there to the game on Thursday with in the rain. The field kind of took a beating, but Billy Costello did a great job of putting it back together. It looks absolutely gorgeous here tonight. Fourth down. Fourth and ten. Maddox in motion. Cotter's going to roll to the right. Cotter may keep it. No, Cotter's going to flick it. They like that pass that they do, and there's 44. And the boy, everybody is not too happy with that. But they like that little flick pass that they've been coming up to, and Joe Busolucci, okay, has knocked it down. So Pomperog will take over on downs, but they trail 35 to nothing. Falcons have come out on their mission. They haven't stopped. He probably should have thought about a little pump fake there to get the guy up in the air and ran past him. But, but that's not what he was designed to do, so that's not what he did. You know, what's, you know when you know you got a good team? When you're head 35 to nothing, everybody in the press box is complaining. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's when you know you got a good team. <laughs> <laughs> like at the end of the world, he didn't complete a pass. It's 35 to nothing. Paparok takes over on the 15. Arikia was in motion. Hand off to Shell Boy. Shell Boy. Fumble, boy. Mike. That ball's on the ground. Rashawn got it. Yep. Let's see who they give it to Rashawn. I told you he's and, coming up. And, he'll hand it to the ref and Fitz will take over. And she Shalvai is going to have a talk with DJ Stanley, Demaray of <laughs> killing all, all the different running backs who've been pounded by that defense. All the other one, Pozzello of Waterford, yep. and all of them down the line. Joe Rashan with the recovery. Joe Rashan on that recovery. Pomperog right now is stunned. <laughs> they have no idea as to what has occurred. I never play, but I know Shellboy's stunned. <laughs> the Pomperog coaches walk out and they really don't look too happy. Hand but, back uh, to McCoy. Nice McCoy nice. walks into the end zone, Ronnie, for 13 yards. His third touchdown. 41 to nothing. McCoy with three touchdowns. That gives him 46 for the year. Not 46. <laughs> That gives him 20 for the year, 46 for his career. Pomperog has no idea as to what has occurred to them. Not in their worst nightmare did they think that they'd be down 41 to nothing in the first half. And it all started, Murph, after Fitch won the coin toss, elected to kick it off. Pomperog had a beautiful return, about a 60-yard return. And from there, it's been all nothing for Pomperog and all everything for Fitch. DeVoe with the kick, it's high, it's good. You know how many extra points DeVoe's got this year? 30. 30. He knows, he listens. 30. Fitch 42, Pomperog 0. You listen to ECC Football, 980 WSUV. Field. I don't think we went away. We're talking to the Danbury guy to see if we come out at halftime from the Danbury newspaper. Okay, who? That'd be fun to talk to a guy from downstate. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure Fitch has put on a show for him, Murph, but I'm sure you've seen a lot of teams play from throughout. It'd be fun to talk he, to him. Well, you, you know, know, he really has not seen Fitch at, at their best. Yeah. I mean, he's seen a lot of Fitch defense, but he has not seen the offensive fireworks that uh, we've seen from Fitch. So we can ask him if he votes in the uh, poll. <laughs> <laughs> Fitch 42, Pop Rock 0. And this is a state semifinal game, 42 to 0, minute 30 left. Have to play first half. Tristan White with the kickoff, and he squibs out when it's a rocket. And Shalfoy's going to try to run this one back. He's going to come up the middle, and boy, he's going to be nailed. Ian Lalonde is going to be nailing him, and also looks like Paul Odo and Joe Rashan. And he's going to Paparog with a minute 31 to go, and a half that would never end. 
Okay, they're going to take over on their own 35-yard line. And we'll get sacks full center at halftime also. Will he play? Will he play this? I don't know. <laughs> All he should is. You know what I mean? Yeah. What a shoulda could. <laughs> Too cold for the second well, we, tonight, fellas. We will also ask the school psychologists what the Pomerog players are thinking at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> nah, when, I, when I'm deep, this is a good team. They're just a little bit out of their class tonight, but they're a good team. Pew drops straight back. Pew's going to throw. He's going to throw to Oricchio, and Oricchio's going to get nailed. He's going to get wow. back to the line of scrimmage, so he took that hit to gain two yards. Right. Well, we've got the Prince out there. The Prince is playing uh, corner. Yeah. Raheem Carter with a major league hit right there. Pop Rock with about a three yard game, but I'll tell you what, he's feeling all three of those yards he just got whacked for. Well, let's see Henrique deep. It's going to be flanked to left. They've had him pretty much in control. He's a good receiver. I like the way he sits down on the ball, does a few other things, but he's been covered greatly by the pitch. Few hands off inside to looks like Shell Ryan. Shell Ryan's going to go nowhere. He's going to get maybe back to nice scrimmage, and you're not running in the middle against them. Not with George Hall, the mad not dog, with Odo. The Mad Dog took him down by himself that time, uh, Mike. And you're right, you just don't run the middle on Fitch. Fitch 42, Paparog 0. And Paparog doesn't know what to do now. They can't bet it down by 42 points. They're not going to get the 42 points back on fullback dives, that's for sure. But every time they go back to pass, only people open with people with black shirts on. Well, let's well, see. His favorite receiver tonight has been the Duke. Yeah. Let's see what they do. Pew strike back. Takes the hand off. And it's George Hall. And George Hall just ate him. That's all I can say. He wasn't buying that fake, was he? Man alive. It was a good fake to the halfback on the draw play. But George Hall wasn't buying it. And he nails Pew for a big loss. The yeah. quarterback has very little chance, Phil, when he's got to go one-on-one -on -one with George Hall. No, no. The, the judge the judge has been the execution in the night. And that's he's the, been the end jury of the jury as well. And that's the end of the first half with the score of Fitch 42. Popperog 0. Stay tuned for the halftime show. On the only station for ECC Football 980, WSUB. WSUB. Well, Mike, we're back at Fitch High School, 42 to nothing. Is it a surprise? Yeah, is this a surprise? Well, I got to ask you one question. Well, let introduce who it's going to oh, be. Dr. Mikachi, I got to write this. Hi, how you doing? Hey, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I had him. Everybody else, Pocacci, Spocacci, but now it's Mikachi. But anyhow, yeah, that Gary accent and everything. That's, that's good. Yeah, I've done a little better. Hey, give me a chance. I'm a rookie at this. <laughs> but now everybody's about four, five, no, oh, maybe two months ago. You guys made a bold decision earlier. You turned the lights on. What do you think? From now, good idea. I'll tell you, great idea. And what a crowd! What a great crowd we have here tonight. You know the. Uh, Rashad Carter. I, you can just imagine him 30 years from now with his grandkids, and he'll, he'll talk about those seven interceptions that he had in the first quarter. <laughs> It'll go back for five for touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. Things seem to, I mean, sometimes they grow over time, you know, in your mind, but what a wonderful first half. It was mistake-free football. You don't make mistakes against this fish team and get away with it. Let me ask you a question. I mean, obviously your job is to oversee every school in this whole school system, but you ever sneak down, like, to the high school once in a while just to see how the spirit is, like, on a game day or something oh, like that? Oh, yeah, I love to. I mean, and I, I'm in the how lunchroom. How was it today? It was, it was up. Mm -hmm. Kids were, they were calm, they were excited, they're motivated, they're driven, they're on a mission. And they're on a roll, literally. Isn't that one of the world's greatest things that Coach Ellis, Coach Evans' son is writing a report on John McCoy? That neat. His school. That's you know, neat. That's neat. I mean, it's, this, is, you know, this is what can make the rest of the year a great year in a high school. You get uh, the spirit of a student body just going, and you get everybody motivated, and, and, and it transfers over to academic success. Well, Dr. McCarthy, coming from a school like University of Michigan, uh, a football school, an athletic type school, everyone knows that football sets the tone for the rest of the school right. for the rest of the year. You bet, that's right. And I understand you played pro ball. Yes, I did. Uh, it's really great to have you as part of this team here. Oh, well, it's great to be part of this and team. And it's, it's one of the things that I said on uh, Thanksgiving Day to these other guys that I'm really pleased with the work that you do and in, in giving us this play-by-play -play and uh, all the, just how you make this game come alive for the people that can't make it to the to the stadium. Well, so. we, we have an opportunity to cover some real fine football. And, and, and some very nice administrators like yourself and principals from other schools and, and we're welcomed really well. We have a good time and really all the credit goes to uh, 
to Ronnie A because he's just got a, a huge heart. He wants to present these kids in the best light, and he gives these kids a leg up. And, and you know, I, I can't speak for Mike, but I'm here because of him, and, and that's just the way it is. That's it's, that's uh, super, super. This is fun. I'm looking forward to Saturday. Well, I was just going to ask you that. You know, we didn't want because uh, we got Joshua Limousine that's going to bring us by Limousine down to the game. But I told him no Joshua Limousine commercials till after we know whether or not we're going on our Saturday. But I told him after I get the Joshua Limousine's uh, commercials going. Yeah. Making your plans for Saturday now? Hey, I'm all set. <laughs> <laughs> you meet him last week? I'll be there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank great, you for coming job. by. Thank Always you. great. Superintendent of the Groton Schools, Dr. McCutchie. Great guy. Great sports fan. And just a, a yeah. pleasure to be around. And, 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 you know, when they talk about school spirit, when they talk about school pride and stuff like that, it starts at the top, Murph. And that guy's at the very top. And you talk about a trickle-down effect. When you got a guy like that running a show, you can get up even higher than what you are. It's not even a trickle-down effect. It's more like a waterfall yes. effect. <laughs> but there's only one important question left to be answered. What are we going to eat on Saturday? No. <laughs> are you or are you not, Saxophone Santa, playing the national anthem before the state championship game? <laughs> <laughs> That's all we want to know. <laughs> I am Saxophone Santa. Are you? Mike, I'd do it in a heartbeat if they invited me. And uh, I, I did open the Special Olympics uh, on the yeah. tenor saxophone a I couple of times. That. So I, I'd be glad to do that. So well, Let's um, see if I, we can make a call and get that done. You and Ronnie A. and Phil, with the power you guys have, you keep the Saxophone Santa. Yeah. Opening the, the well, you don't, national I don't know. I, I wanted to sing it. So. Oh, well, you can sing it when he plays it. Phil, you're a mother, not a singer. But in any event... Um, we want to thank you. Last week, Murphy's down in Philadelphia with his three beautiful children, enjoying their, he has twins, and they had a birthday party and all that down there for him, so he couldn't make it with us, but you did the play-by-play -play and some color commentary. We want to thank you. You were great. You're already getting some people telling you not to do it again, though, aren't you? That is true, Ron. <laughs> people, me? Uh, when I, I walked was the one who told him not to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> people were blocking their ears when they saw me walking around, so uh, <laughs> let me say it's a festive atmosphere here, and it was, it was festive before the game, and I think everybody was presuming Fitch was going to win this game, and it sure looks like they're going to. Certainly is, 42 to nothing. Well, you know, one of the Pomperoy coaches was up here in the booth before the game, and I was saying that, well, Fitch is going to do their usual, and they're probably going to blow these guys out. And as soon as I got finished saying that, he immediately left to go down to the field to tell the team that. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I said to the person that was up here, I said, it's too late now. <laughs> because whatever is going to happen is already in your mind. Yeah. You, you cannot yeah. change your mindset in the course of a day. Yep, that's true. And I, but whatever it was that he said, Murph, when they went down there to say it, guess what? Didn't work. Well, you know, just like just like Joe Lewis said to Champ, it really do not matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any event, we'll start them Joshua limousines up Saturday. Max, Kevin McMahon, wonderful job. Thanksgiving Day. Thanks a lot. You know, I'll be taking my sleigh down to West Haven. <laughs> <laughs> what are the all time? You know, Kevin. What do you say? Like, let, let's say, and I don't wish you not Tom Rock. Say any kid, say any kid has an experience today where they get beat 48 to nothing, 50 nothing, 60 nothing. They go to see their school psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously, because I'm sure about these kids. I'm not making light of Pop Rock at all. That's no, cool not at all. I'm like, you wouldn't do that. And then, what, what do you think? What would they say? Well, you know what? I think. Uh, let me say that uh, disappointment is proportionate to expectations. Okay. So I think every one of those kids came down to Groton and and I Kenny Wood. Uh, they, they came down to Groton and they said, we're going to beat Fitch. And so their expectations were high. Now all of a sudden they're getting, well, they're getting slammed. Uh, disappointment has got to be significant, especially in the locker room. I have no idea what that coach said. But if a, if a kid came to me Monday morning, I'd say, hold your head up high because you played in the state uh, semi-championship, uh, the semi-final, and you've got nothing uh, to be ashamed of. You should be very proud. It's only a game. It's only a game. Put it in perspective. We not only have professional football players right Ronnie A, all the women of Duane, plus professional psychologists to help us through the situation. <laughs> help us after we're done, because I'll tell you what, well, who's going to help me, Mike? <laughs> well, you've got the saxophone. Well, that, that's Physician heal thyself. <laughs> you got your hot tub. You go back there. And that's true, and I'll be there after this game. <laughs> but in any event, if you were a school psychologist at Palm Pro, there's a good chance the door might be, your door will be banging tomorrow And morning. I think you'd be doing group therapy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Can any no, of you let's let's be nice. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, Phil. Well, you know, we got to talk to the Pompero coaches, the head coach, very gracious, very nice people. I'm sure all the kids are. It's just that the Fitch team is so powerful and so strong. They're not going to be denied this year, man. No, they are not. We said it from the beginning of the year, and I uh, will continue to say it. Fitch is on a mission. I believe they're going to win the state championship, and I believe the next week's game is not going to be much different. A Saturday's game is not going to be very much different than any other game we've seen this year. Mac, you going to be there? I, I will be there. Go Fitch. I, I'm excited. Right. Very excited. Thanks for coming by, Kevin McMahon. Thank Wonderful. you, Ronnie A., Phil, and Mike. Thank you. Uh -huh. Wonderful halftime show. Right now, Pompro is kicking it off to Fitch. Mike McLaughlin back to the duties. All right, Andrew Goldenberg's going to kick off. What if they try an onsider right here? We'll see. Thanks a lot, Kevy. But he puts his foot into it. It's going to be taken. Okay, Ron. Dante Ross's, Ross's Ross. knee was down when he caught it, Mike. You know, Donnie Ross is, Dante Ross is someone who hasn't really done much the last couple of games. He hasn't had a chance. And, you know, you figured he'd be ready to go, and it's just one of those sophomore mistakes because sometimes we forget he's still just a young, young player with a lot of talent. But not only that, I, you, you look around, the situations being what they are, you know, Coach Emery has to make decisions as to when to play people and where to play them. And, you know, he is a second-string guy, regardless of how talented he is. All right, let's see what happens. Pitch back to McCoy with already three touchdowns. McCoy cuts it inside. He's going to get up to the 35-yard line. He's going to about six, second and four. That's the first time they've really brought down McCoy before he made big yardage. Did you see that blocked outfield by Michael Hall? Yes. Number 41? My God, he, he, he blew him off the line by 20 yards. And if Corey Nattinger didn't have enough problems getting creamed on the kickoffs, they just found him on that play there. <laughs> Second down and four. Falcon 35, just beginning the third period, 42 to nothing, Falcons. Hand off to Tristan White. He cuts it outside. He's got first down. White spinning. He's turning, and Phil says he's... Tristan the night away. Okay, and he's got a first down up to about the 46-yard line. Beautiful. We're even, we're even getting the same time down here. Beautiful run by <laughs> Tristan White. You know, 42 to 0, but you know, I don't know, Murph. Do you, do, will they call out the dogs today, or will they let them just play it out? They're going to let the dogs bark a little bit because, number one, it's still early in the game, and number two, these guys are as intense as they were at the opening kick it off. First down, Falcons on their own 45-yard line. McCoy in motion. McCoy has the ball. He's going to cut it back inside. McCoy's got five. McCoy's got ten. McCoy's got 11, 12, and he's running, runs into Michael Scott, who helps tackle, and McCoy gets the first down on about the 42-yard line. Nice turn upfield by McCoy. Mark Murph, they shut the outside off. He came back and went up a little quicker than he normally does. Nice job. That forced the entire Pomperos defense to tackle him. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, Phil, Adestasio got the Christmas socks on here. Look at him, number 54. Yeah, I see him. <laughs> got his Christmas socks on for the second half here. A couple of those guys got those jail, break, jail prison socks, Mike. 42-yard line of the Panthers. McCoy in motion. Carter has it, going to roll to the left. Carter's going to keep it. Carter's going to cut inside. Carter's going to get down to the 35, and he wisely goes down at about the 35-yard line, gets seven, and Carter looks much more decisive in his decisions. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He, he made up his mind to pull that ball down and take off around the corner. <laughs> And I believe that Fitch is not going to let up for a little while. I think it'll be the fourth quarter before we see any significant movement in players. No, you know, this is the last time around for these seniors. Yes. Okay, and they deserve, you know, this is state tournament play. This is not somebody in your conference. You play, every play is to win here. Second down and three from the 35-yard line. McCoy in motion. Carter drops straight back. He's going to air it out. He's looking for Maddox. Maddox pushes off, catches the ball. Maddox is going to be down to about the five. Skips by someone. Touchdown. And Maddox gets a touchdown. And Maddox pushed off Enrique. Enrique didn't even know what was happening. <laughs> Maddox just, you know, he doesn't run full, full speed unless he has to. He let the two defenders go by him. He stopped and just dodged in. The kid is what you would really call a natural, huh, Murph? Yeah, he's a football player. He's, he's someone that really knows how to play the game, has a feel for the game, knows the flow. He's just in, in the zone all the time. And as graceful as you can be. 
Yes. Graceful, graceful athlete. She has the kind of power that she would not expect on a kid that's built so wiry. And he just went up, got the ball. Will DeVoe gets a lot of foot into it. It's going to be good. 49 to nothing with 937 running. And we'll take a break. You're listening to ECC football on 980 WSUB. Fitz took the opening second half kickoff, guys, marched it right down. 25-yard touchdown pass from Raheem Carter to Mad Dog Maddox. Puts Fitz ahead. 49 to nothing in a state semifinal playoff game. And I'll tell you something, fellas. Make the reservations for Saturday because we got something to do. I'll tell you what. You talk about that, Phil. 90 touchdowns for the Falcons right now. But That's this, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome, Mike. <laughs> and go to show you how they are. Look at the sideline. Look at their defense just anxious to get back on the field, to get back in the fray. Tristan White kicks it. It's fallen on by number 45 for the Panthers. And 45, as I got this upside down, is Robert Stiles, Jr. And they're going to take over. They being the Panthers on their own 32 yard. I'll tell you what, Fitch has 49 points on 24 plays. They're averaging two points a play. Figure that one out. <laughs> Yeah, these guys are just as good as we're going to see at high school level. Your buddy Gerald's going to be paying 33 <laughs> for the Panthers, excuse me. Pew to quarterback. Hands off to Frazier. Frazier's going to get up to about the 33, 34 yard line, maybe a yard at best. And the Falcons are still playing with the same intensity as when it was 0-0. Zero zero. Yes, they are. You look out there in that tackle, there were eight Fitch defenders tackling that ball carrier. And Odo is there, and looks like he's recovered from his injury. And, and I tell you, so the neatest thing I've heard today, very simply, is young A.J. Uh, Evans wants to do a report on John McCoy. And that's not because he's here. He had never met John McCoy, and will get the opportunity in the locker room. Isn't that Nifo? Yeah, that's his hero. I don't blame him. You couldn't pick a better one, I don't think. Hand off inside to Frazier again. He didn't run much in the first half. He's going to get nowhere on that one. Third down. Look at that. Joe Rashad had him around the ankles. And there, once again, you got five other Fitch defenders on that tackle. George Hall, you know, his brother, the baby bull, they're all in on it, all wanting the piece. I'll tell you what. Third down and 10 from the 33. No one's going anywhere. Ronnie A's back. That means the game is in control if Ronnie A's wandering. If it gets close, he'll be back. Third down and 10. Pew the quarterback. Wing T. Going to drop straight back, and he's being pressured by Mike, by Maddox. And Maddox, if he didn't do enough on the play, just eats him up. Maddox and Dave Miner, and who else we got back there? Michael Hall. The, yep, the judge and the baby bull are both back there. That's got to be like, I'll tell you, they would make Pew the Thanksgiving turkey, the way the whole young men after that. I mean, I'm telling you, that's what he was like. Doing it. And he's got to be a sack five, six, seven times this game already. You have to wonder how Pomp Rock feels. They come in here 8-1-1, one one, obviously seeing their championship material. And to, to be beaten like this is, has got to be something that they never, ever even dreamed about. Enrique is going to let it bounce. It's going to be covered down on the 38-yard line of the Falcons. And I'll tell you, Maddox wasn't that far from getting that one. So with the score... 49 for the Falcons, 0 for Pomerong. You listen to high school playoff football on WSUB 980 AM. Who is that mask Uh, 7. Go back, Garnett Gary. Go back. Stop runs the ball. A senior who had a touchdown on Thanksgiving. Emery got him a touchdown on Thanksgiving. It was really nice. He runs up to about five yards. Starbuck. DeVoe is in there at quarterback. Yeah, we got Woolworth in there. We got Dante uh, Ross. Dante's Inferno in there. We, we've got uh, the second team backfield. Yeah, we've got second team backfield, first team uh, offensive line. That's not a bad group to have. Second about four. Ross in motion. Hand off to Ross. Ross spins it to the outside. Ross gets the first down. Ross gets in the Panther territory. He bumped into DeVoe just a tad, but all of a sudden, he spun it out. And well, the thing is, is that the Pomperog is not really getting a break here because the Inferno is as quick and fast as anybody else on the starting offensive unit. 
and and I'll tell you what, he's not Michael Hall, but he runs hard, Starbuck. So there's no, you know, there's no let up. Remember the touchdown Starbuck had when he ran over a couple of players. 75 yard run. First down. On the 48 yard line of Palm Rock. Ross in motion. Whoops, hand off to Starbuck and and DeVoe almost tackled him and all of a sudden a, a whole lot of other people come. Herrick, Stephen Herrick, 66 and a few other people tackle him down, but that was a little bit of miscommunication in the backfield. Well, that's that timing and footwork that you have to have to be a wing T quarterback. You know, it takes a while to get down. you got to be running it day after day after day. And more than likely, uh, DeVoe gets to run the other team's offense more than he gets to run his own during practice. Crystal foul against Pomerock. So... That's going to cost them 15 big ones on a play where they had Fitch stopped. One of the few times they really stopped him cold. Going to take it to the 33-yard line. But I'll tell you what is open to conjecture. And the season's not over yet, but all of these names of people flying around for the Fitch quarterback last year. Because Carter has been a quarterback for three years. And you've got DeVoe here and Norris. And people are saying George Hall. And people from other schools are coming. It's, this is a prestigious place to play right now. Certainly is. I would want to be part of this program, Mike. I'll tell you, if I was in football, I'd give it a shot. I'd probably get cut, but <laughs> I'd give it a shot. First down on the 34-yard line. Second team offense in there, offensive backfield. Walworth in motion, pitch back to Walworth. He cuts in his side, makes a good cut. He's going to get close to a first down. Walworth, for a sophomore, runs hard. Walworth does run hard. He's a very good ball player. It bodes well for Fitch in the future. Walworth, Sawback. All these guys, the Inferno, they're all going to be there. Yes. It, kind of, it kind of sets up a rivalry in the future between Pomperog and, and Fitch because Pomperog has a lot of sophomores and juniors on their squad. Yes, and you mentioned that earlier off the top. I'll tell you, Pomperog, because Fitch will be looking for games next year. Okay. Second down about one. Pitch back to Dante Ross. Dante pops to the outside, cuts in the side, got the first down. He's going to be down to about the 19-yard line. This is a very effective second-team backfield. Yeah, he did an excellent job that time of, uh, of following the offensive tackle, following that offensive tackle up through the hole. And I believe that was uh, the big man out there. Brandon Cook? Brandon Cook. Well, you figure, Fitch doesn't come in our line in the next year because Brandon Cook's back, Dan Carey comes back from his injury, and Andrew Berrigan, who's as big as anybody, okay, comes back. So they've got all kinds of linemen coming back, decent players. And they still have Michael Hall. As long as you got him, you got a chance. Here's Walworth coming. That play, I think, Fitch line started before the back did. They had got a first down to the 19. We'll see what happens. Uh, I, th I think that penalty could be against Pomperog. But I could be wrong. Yes, it is. Offsides. Because Pomperog is doing anything now that to try to beat the snap, to do things to try to stop this. Because, you know, they never in their wildest dreams expected to be 508 in the third period down 49 to nothing. And they have put forth an effort. I mean, they had a quarterback who had thrown one interception all year. It was three in the first period. See, this is also a situation that is it's a cold night. Yep. When you're getting beat like this, it it's gets colder. a little colder. Uh-huh. All right. First and five from the 14. DeVos to quarterback. Walworth in motion. Head off to Walworth. Walworth's going to have the first down. Walworth's going to have more. He's going to be carrying people. He's going to be inside. Walworth's still Touch going. Down. And what a run that was. You talk about Hart. 14 yards. He just kept going. Tyler Walworth. Second touchdown of the year. <laughs> to nothing. How about this, Coach Evans? 91 touchdowns for Fitch this year. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful run by Tara Walworth. If you watch that time, he waited for his blockers and cut off behind them and just wended and fought his way into the end zone. 14-yard run. That was a big-time run for that young man. And, and he, like you said on McCoy before, kept his feet moving. That's what you have to do. That's a cardinal rule in football. You keep your feet moving, good things will happen. Well, these guys are listening to somebody. I'll tell you that much. It's 55 to nothing. Ronnie A., he probably threw the last block for that one. Okay, DeVoe's going to try another one. Get some height. 
No good. Roddy A threw a lookout block out yeah. there. He said, hey, look out, Tyler, look out. 55 to nothing. The score, you're listening to high school player football on WSUB, 980 AM. Back at Door Field, fits 55. That's not the speed limit, that's the score. Pop Rock, zero. We got four minutes and 46 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Keep the clock going, baby, because it's cold out here. I got my buddy R.J. Evans right here in front of me being my spotter. And I'll tell you something, uh, Mike, it's a long walk up them stairs when it's cold out like I this. just want you to know when you got to, and we got White Shoes Norris going to kick off. Norris with the kick, gets it away. Nettinger takes it, he fumbles it, the ball's on the ground, he's going to pick it up, he's going to get to the outside, and got to be just swallowed up on the 32-yard line. You know, it's a good thing he, he got swallowed up, because if he didn't, he'd have gotten free. All the Fitz defenders were right back there in that area. Had he broken loose from that pack, he had nothing but green in front of him. Now we got a game of Pomperog where the first thing they want to do is break the shutout. First thing they want to make sure is the heat works on that bus because they got a long drive home and it's cold out here. Well, they came not on some fancy buses. They didn't come down in the yellow ones. They came down in them in those big fancy so the next you know, year, next Greyhound year, tour type Next bus. year they'll have a yellow one. Do they? Feel the quarterback and looks like we've got. A lot of new players, Mike, out there timeout. for Fitch. Uh, Fitch. Uh, it's going to be a timeout. A lot of new players out there, guys, for the Fitch Falcons. Uh, there's about half the starters in and about half reserves right now. I'm um, going to be taking slow. We're going to go down to Dwayne with a sideline report real soon, see how the Fitch players feel. Uh, most of the starters, I think, have had their day off. Dwayne will figure out and find out exactly what the uh, coaches are going to do about that. But it is 55 for Fitch, 0 for Pompanog, and I'll tell you what, fellas, don't make any plans for Saturday because we got something to do. I'm trying to figure out where Maddox got the lollipop. Unless <laughs> he plays with one because he has a lollipop. Now, I didn't see anybody give it to him. Okay. <laughs> he had it in his sock. Mike. Okay, could it be. I, like I said, I never played. I don't. But you know, what amazing thing here is as you watch this different game unfold is as Pomerog comes in, a decent team. This is a team that. Is, you know, in the top echelon and not maybe the top 20 teams in the state. And they were still searching to do anything out there, first team in there. Few the quarterback. He's going to drop straight back. He's going to be pressured, and they're going to be after him. Will Ross is after him, but Pugh's going to pick it up. Pugh's going to have good luck until Dante Ross knocks him out of bounds. And Pugh found it a little easier against the younger players. Yeah, he did. He was lucky that they didn't cut him off. They lost contain on that play to the outside, Mike. That's why he was able to get around that corner. Defensive end has to hold his outside position and force the quarterback back inside. But Will Ross was looking to get a sack. He forgot little simple fundamentals, looking to get a sack, and you can't blame him. He's a young player. He wants to make some big plays. Well, it's a lot easier to spell it than to get one, Mike. Yep. <laughs> All righty. Pugh gets the That's first down. Pugh's going to run it to the right side. He's going to have some good yardage. He's going to get another first down. And, again, this is the first team in there for Pop Rock. He's going to get down to about the 40-yard line. We may see an interesting situation. The first team gets the ball. They get down inside the red zone. You may see the old pitch numbers back in the game. Does Pop Rock call the timeout? Not yet. But old Johnny McCoy is back to himself because he's doing the real McCoy shuffle on the sidelines. You know that head's not bothering him at all. All he can think about now is Saturday. Let's have somebody pick him up for, to bring him up here to the to the bus on Saturday morning, old Murph. Yeah. <laughs> Pitch in motion. <laughs> <laughs> Salvoy gets two, three fights, gets down to about the 36-yard line. Going to be second down to about five. That's what we're doing, Mike. We'll get Joshua's limousine to swing by. We don't want him driving up here. Yeah, you know, that's the, that, that poor kid. That's what I said well, to him well, in the restaurant when I saw him Saturday night. I said he had a date. It was homecoming. A very nice young lady, and he's very polite. Me and John McCoy. He said, "How you doing? How you been? So forth. How you feeling? Okay, so." And I said, "She drove, right?" I mean, yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know. But he's a great kid. He's a great oh, kid. Nice, Mike. <laughs> you guys are cruel. He's a great kid, though. I'll tell you, I'm proud of him. Okay, Pugh hands off to 
<laughs> well, you it's know, like Mike. To, to Boy goes nowhere. You say he's a great kid. Mike DeMiro came on Thursday and told us that 10 years he's been riding southeastern Connecticut. He is probably the most polite, respected, and, and nicest kid that he's seen in his 10 years um, while covering. And that's a nice statement because he's seen well, them all. I'm going to make a statement now. The only two people that I know that are nicer than John McCoy are his father. Calvin and his mother Janice, because they both were in class when I was teaching at the University of well, New Haven, you know, Mike, and they were great people. The acorn don't fall far from the tree. Don't fall far in that family, I'll tell you that much. Third down, double hand off side to Fitch, he's going to be a Ricky O, and he's going to get maybe, maybe back to the 35 yard line, it's going to be fourth down about five. Falcon defense is stepping in with a lot of reserves on the field. Um, guys, right now, we'll go down the uh, Falcon roster because we have um, Rob Taylor in there, Jim Counts in there, uh, fellows that don't normally uh, uh, play the entire game or, or sometimes all the game. Will Ross is in there. Shelton. Uh, White Shoes Norris. Well, Shelton is one of the starters, Mike. Yeah. But he is a sophomore, though, Ronnie. Yeah. Tyler Walworth. Two drafts back, fourth and five. Looks for Henrique. Henrique's going to get the pass, but he's going to get more than the pass because the first man to get him was Ross, and he said. Yeah, and that's Dante Ross, and that's been one of the biggest things or knocks against his defense, Murph, is that he gives too much cushion uh, to the wide receiver. That was an example where he was still about eight yards behind the wide receiver when the catch was made. Well, one of the cardinal rules in high school is don't get beat deep. So he's trying to protect himself from getting beat deep by giving that cushion, knowing that he has the speed to recover and close quickly, but as he gets better, he'll refine his technique. Okay. First down from the 14. Hand up to Frazier. Frazier's going to bounce to the outside. Frazier's inside the 10. He's inside the 5. Yeah, he's going to be, excuse me, he's going to be down to about the 13-yard line. I'm sorry. He's going to be a first down, and he's going to be first down on the 13-yard line. Frazier, number 84, ran well. They got odd numbers for running backs, 84, 54. Yeah. Pitch 55, pop rug zero, a minute 30 seconds left to play, third quarter. And if you don't have any plans for Saturday at 2 o'clock, start making them because WSGB is going to have all the action right here of state championship football. And we'll say it now, Fitch will be there. I think it's safe to say it, huh, guys? Yeah, I would yeah. bet on that. <laughs> Raise your motion. Hand off inside to Salvoy. Salvoy's going to be eaten up by all, all of a sudden. It, that hole closed, and he got maybe, maybe two yards. And there was some good young people. 31, Will Ross, Johnny Norris, White Shoes had a tackle in there. They're all in there. Ray McCall's in there right now. Uh, Billy Strong, some backups that don't get to see much time. And you know what? If you talk to those guys, they'd probably be the last ones to tell you that they thought they'd probably play today. Yep. But guess what they are? In the third quarter, they're there because Fitch has got 55 and they got zero for Pomperog. You see what Pomperog does, second down. Well, I'd like to see my big man, Johnny Capone, get a shot. Oh, yeah, inside hand off to Riccio, and he's going to be tackled by Norris. Norris got get the shoe tops. He gets maybe two or Riccio. Yeah, Capone's standing right in front of us, ain't he 75? Yeah, he is. And, and Murph Pomperog's got the ball on the 11-yard line, but as a defensive player, it is important to get that shut out and to keep that. As a defensive player right here, right now, I'm grinding my teeth. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just I just hate to see a zero leave the scoreboard. Right. If it was 55 to 6, you probably wouldn't mind as much, but you want to keep that zero up there. I, I, I'm telling you, it, it could, I, I would rather win 3 to nothing than, than, than to win 55 to 6. Yep, I agree. We've got a timeout on the field. Nine seconds left to play, third quarter. Fitch, 55, Pomperog, 0. You're listening to the only station for ECC football, 980 WSUB. Left to play third quarter. Pomperog with the ball on the 11-yard line. Mike, they got a third down and nine yards to go. 11-footer touchdown. But Fitz wants to keep that zero on the board. Let's see what they did. Third down. Pugh's going to look. Pugh's going to throw it over to Riccio. It's intercepted it's by McCrawl. McCrawl's got it. He intercepted in the end zone and brings it back out to the 24-yard line. McCrawl with a tremendous interception. Nice interception. Stepped right in in front of the intended receiver. Picked it up, took off, and Phil Murphy's got a big smile on his face. He likes that goose egg up on the board. Beautiful. He, he made an excellent break on the ball. The way that you read about 
And he did a good job of returning it. Good job, good job. Five interceptions. That's the end of the third quarter, Ronnie. Score 55 for the Falcons. Zero for the Papa Rock yeah. Panthers. Yeah, let's keep it here as my buddy. You're out there filming. What's your name for Comcast? Ron Taylor. Ron Taylor. You're doing a great job. Out cold out there tonight, though, huh? Yeah. But you're doing a great job. The players real happy down there? Yep. Well, they're happy. Keep up the good work because it's guys like you that put that broadcast on the show that do such a great job. Who else is working with you? Jaime Perez and Mr. Devine upstairs yeah. and his son. And uh, you learn a lot from Mr. Devine, huh? Yeah. Well, you keep it up because you guys are doing a great job. Thanks a lot. All right, go warm up. Drink some hot chocolate or something. The end of the third quarter, we're going to keep it here at Fitch 55. They got the ball on the 26-yard line of Pomperog. I want to see if uh, uh, Campbell is coming down, Coach Campbell, because I'd like to get a word from him after his offense is put on a, an offensive display, 55 points. Well, you'll have to take the mic up and go get him. Well, you know, the other thing is, because they got so close down there to score, I think Fish needs to score some little points. All right, Walworth in motion. Walworth cuts it back inside. Walworth is still going. Walworth is up to about the 30-yard line. Gets nine, and Walworth is running hard. Did you see Walworth switch hands on the ball in yes. there when he was running? Walworth wants to play. Walworth has some skills. Pitch is deep, Murph, that's for sure. They got skills throughout the entire entire uh, team, that's for sure. Well, they've had 24 people score this year. Yeah. And Russ Connell's playing number 80 right now. Fitch has got a lot of, mostly second stringers. We got the judge in at fullback, the ex-former baby, baby bull, George Hall. And DeVoe is the quarterback, as he has been for most second half. The George Hall's got it. He's going to run over a few people. He's going to get to up close to the first down. And I'll tell you what, George Hall has the first down because that's like a freight train running up in there. Well, it would be nice to see Fitch just run off about five or six minutes off of this clock, you know, and, and put Papa Rock out of their misery because this game right now is ignoring to the benefit of no one. It's cold out here. Fitch has another game to play on Saturday. Let's close this thing up and get out of here. Uh, and Murphy speaks 11 minutes left to play in the game. Fitch 55, Pomperog 0. But Fitch, Mike, they wants to eat that clock away right now. On the 34-yard line of their own 34-yard line. Got Walworth in motion. Walworth's coming to left, and he's brought down. That's one of the Dante. Dante, Dante, Dante Ross. I'm sorry. Off. Dante Ross gets to the outside, and he was... That time he was eaten up by 31, who's playing an excellent game for the Panthers, as best anybody could play. And it was Tom Giolatti. And you know, Murph, as we look on the field, the entire Paparog defense is when you could throw a blanket around them. They're all within 15 feet of the ball. They're just daring Fitch to throw the ball. I mean, if you're a coach, maybe you got to put up there. I know it's not something you want to do at 55 nothing, but with the defense you're playing, you might have to. Well, they, they do have nine men in the box up here, Ronnie. It is a tough situation, but they, they feel correctly so that Fitch is going to try to run the clock. And McGraw, 27, had that run, but I There's think we're going to hold, the hold in. They threw that one in. Like, like how the refs now toss them in like that, like it, you know. Well, they do a nice job, like throwing dots. Mm -hmm. Well, they had insult to injury. It's a bad one. They throw the flag and it lands on you. <laughs> It's even worse if you're the other referee who's standing there and didn't call it, and they throw the flag on you. Well, you know, with 10 minutes left to play in a 55 to nothing ball game, I think the last thing the officials want to do, because they're freezing out there too, is stop the clock with a flag, because I'm sure they want to keep it ticking. But in any event, the game has been officiated magnificently, as all the games have been all year long. These refs aren't from here, but they're good refs too. But wait a second, the referees aren't cold, because referees don't have blood. <laughs> okay. All right, let's see what we got here. George Hall with the ball. He's going to run over a few people, run into a couple more, push the pile forward up to about the 29-yard line. And this is a guy speaking at, at the, the referee's, referee's banquet, banquet December 10th at the Groton Motor. How did they know. pick you? You notice this at night. Yep. Because they're vampires. I'll tell you what. <laughs> there's a lot of coaches, I think, in the area like to speak at that banquet. I'll tell you what. <laughs> did, did, you, did, you notice, did you notice how the judge just... Look for people to hit on that play. He didn't go where there was a hole. He went where there was a white shirt so he could knock him down. He's an animal judge. He's used to playing defense. That's all. 
All right, this handoff to George Hall. He's going to take the whole offensive line. He's got to finally bring him down the defensive line. Excuse me. He's going to get back to the 26. Going to be fourth down. And this could be Fitch's first punt of the game. Fitch's first punt. And like we elaborated on earlier, Pomperov with nine men on the line. Cheapers out to throw one off there. But I guess, you know, as a coach, it's probably something you can't do. Well, I don't, I don't see a punter coming in unless... Uh, White no, shoes. Joe Rashad is white. Oh, North white shoes punt. punt. Okay. When's the last time Joe Rashad near punter punted? <laughs> about four games ago. I'm he was a sophomore. Yeah, he's only had one punt this year. Probably. You know, it's about a 90. I know. <laughs> but uh, let's see what White shoes does. Nice high snap. White shoes gets it off as he try to block five. it. Henrique's going to take it. Henrique's going to be at midfield. Going to bring it back to the 45. Cut it back inside to the 40. And Cook's going to nail him on about the 38 yard line. And it's still at 55 to nothing. He's grumbling in the press box up here because the guy ran a punt back 12 yards. Well, then Cook had that nice tackle. Looks like we have a player down for uh, Popperov. Brendan Cook just kind of buried him. He probably, Henrique has probably landed on the ball and knocked the wind out of his I want to ask Coach Evans a question. You obviously play tight end. Everybody knows that. Brendan Cook, 74. About 6'3", 275. Started the year at tight end for them. Okay, for Fitch. And because of an injury to Danny Carey, had to move tackle. But he's only a junior. He's a project that I think every team would like to look for. If you see him, he's got the red socks. This young man coming towards us. Started the year at tight. Big, big hands on him. Looks like he can run a little bit. He looks like he'd be a nice tight end for somebody. Oh, yeah, well, there's no problem with that. I mean, he looks like he got something going. You know, I see the little arms he got there, you know. <laughs> a little bit more extra working out. I think he'd be a devastating tight end, a blocking and passing uh, and receiving runs. tight end. Yeah. Well, let's hope he hears this on Comcast TV. He'll be known. And this is from a guy who played a lot of tight end for it a lot of people. certainly is so. for a lot of people. Ohio State, New York Jets, and a lot of Paul Kennedy knows who he's talking about. But in any event, uh, Mike... Popperog still going with their, with their starters, or have they uh, substituted? Uh, no, nope, they got Shellboy. They've got Pew still a quarterback. So, Coach, let me ask you, 55 to nothing, would you still have, is, it, is that the thing to do, to have your starters right now? Because Fitch has got their backups in. Would you put your backups in now, or, or try to get your starters to put some points on the board? Well, I think I'll put my backups in right now, because, you know, the, the, the young men on the sideline, they've been out there all year doing a great job, you know, helping their team uh, get to this level here. Now, let them come out on the field, have some fun, and, and uh, enjoy it. These are the same young men they'll be seeing next year, so it'll be a good opportunity for them to uh, play against them. And it's a, an experience of a lifetime to be in a state tournament type of game, too. Oh, yeah, I mean, the state tournament, yeah, and, and, and something to talk about, you know, tell your kids in the future, you know? Coach, I, I also thought that it is quite possible that a coach in this situation maybe leave his players out there to kind of punish them a little bit. Well, yeah, he can, he can that's, that's true, too, because I would do it, too, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, take the whooping, you know, you get you, you took it this far, take it all the way, but, you know, these, like, a lot of the young guys here will be playing against each other next year if they continue doing uh, what they're doing, you know, maybe they'll meet each other again next year for a rivalry game. See what they do. Balasucci, Balasucci get, Balasucci gets the ball up to the 35 yard line. Some of these names in about the third team are not that easy to pronounce, especially when they're not on the roster. I wish everybody was Smith, Jones, Greens, whatever, but I ain't got to have that. We got Balasucci carrying the ball. He carried the ball kind of well down to the uh, 31 yard line. But I mean, you know, it's got to be special. I mean. You know, even when the kids, like, it must have been special when you guys broke that losing streak to look in these young men's eyes and say, boy, this is working. Oh, yeah, I mean, you can you can tell that. They, they enjoy that. I mean, these guys, are here, even though in a situation like this, they, they have successfully uh, made it to this point here, and they should be proud of that. And we got Ray Evans with us, Bill Murphy, Ray Evans from St. Bernard's. Hand off inside the shell boy who's been kind of bottled up all night. Shell boy's going to carry the people. That's how we gained about 800 yards and scored 14 touchdowns, Bill, just hard running like that. Well, he's obviously running against second and third teams, guys now, guys now for Fitch. He wasn't running like that against the first team, so, you know, his coach is giving him a little chance to get off. I, I myself... I wouldn't want to give up any points whatsoever. Well, you don't want to give up an inch. The heck with the point. I mean, <laughs> defensive play. Well, I don't mind flexing a little bit, but don't don't break up the shutout. The defense worked hard to get that. All right, Frazier with it, and he's going to be carried. Got to get about three yards. And all of a sudden, this fits second unit. They bend a little bit, but they uh, come back on you. Well, as long as they keep in bounds and let that clock keep running, I suppose that's okay, too. All right. <laughs> They're like, how you doing? When when you know when you see these kids, Coach Evans. I mean, it's this Fitch team. I this is like a once in a maybe. Decade.
a team for us around here. We don't always have teams like this. I mean, this is a marvelous team that they put together, and it was a marvelous team last year, and they've had four defeated seasons in the past six years. Yeah, I think they gained respect of a lot of people, and I think they respect themselves, you know, in the effort the coaches have done for them, you know, preparing them to, uh, to take on a responsibility like this of success. Success is not always easy because people hate you when you win. Okay, Pew with it, he runs the option, boom. There Walworth. is Tyler Walworth, like you said, Phil. Walworth in the backfield very, made a very nice play, closed down quickly, just trapped the quarterback, had him, you know, right there. He, he, he kept contained, quarterback had no place to go. Third down, about nine, run about the 14-yard line. Falcons have bent the end of the third quarter, but they held. The interception by McCraw. We'll see what they do here, third down. I think they're going to go backside right quick on him. I think they're going to um, do some misdirection backside pass on him right quick. I do too, coach. See what the pew is in the shotgun. Pew's going to roll to the right. He's looking. He's looking for his big time receiver. His, his tight end, Fulish. Ooh. And the quarterback took a severe lick. Yes, he did. He's face down on the carpet. Yeah, I, didn't, I saw when I turned him I didn't even see him get hit on that one. But I mean, the, the tight end, Fuel, uh, excuse me, the tight end is Coolish. I'm sorry. Number 12, he was kind of open, but it, like you said, Pew got nailed when he let that ball go. Yeah, I think, it was a, I think it was a good call. You know, if he'd have turned the opposite way and hit number 47 in the corner, who's happened to be back there by himself, he'd have had an opportunity to score right there. Joe Pew took a kiss in the face, though, that <laughs> kind of makes him feel he wants to be on the bus right now. So. You always, I always remember the first state championship game I ever did was 1983. Torrington and New London. Torrington came up. New London was 10 and 0. Torrington was 10 and 0. New London because of the points. That Torrington said, "We have so much luggage. We have so many different uniforms. Could we have your locker room?" To New London. <laughs> and, and and they, because Torrington had stayed the night before at stores, because the game was at a uh, UConn's Memorial Field, and it stayed the night before, and they were all prancing around, and they had a big greyhound like these people have here. So Torrington still hasn't scored against New London. It was 27 to nothing. The London game. That was when Jackie Corcoran, the coach of Bloomfield, was one of the uh, captains of. Speaking of Bloomfield, I saw a nice uh, TV show on Bloomfield the other night on yeah. Fox. Oh yeah, with Jackie Corcoran. I was his first coach ever in, in basketball. He he beat his brother up to get a technical foul from his brother. Let's see, we got Pugh is going to go back. He looked back side. Pugh is going to throw it just like another interception. There it is. And that interception is by Tristan. Uh, that, that's Dante. Dante Ross. 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 And nobody He's gone. He's gone. Dante He's gone. Uh -huh. Holy, a 105-yard interception. But let me tell everybody, our viewers of Comcast, he saw, he our radio it. people, Coach Ray Evans and Sam Bernard whispered in my ear just before the ball was snapped. He said, you're going to see an interception on this play. I swear to God, he said that yes, to me he right did. here. I I You heard it over the air. Coach is holding the microphone. <laughs> he said, you're going to see it in the show. Not only did we see an interception, we saw about a 105-yard return for the interception for Dante, the Inferno Ross. And I'll tell you what, if there's a punctuation mark on this game, it has just been given. That is beautiful. I, 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 I'm not so happy to see the score. Go to 62. I'm just happy that the zero is still stands. 61 yet. They I have ever had play. a guy whisper in my ear there's going to be an interception well, on his play and see an interception. <laughs> well, I want somebody to tell me this guy don't know what he's talking well, about. Well, let me tell you, another question he knows what's happening. If he gets a few players that can do what he tells them, that'd be a different story. <laughs> They're going for two, 61 to nothing, well worth in motion. Hand off in sight to George Hall, and George Hall's going to be wrapped up. So 61 to nothing with 525. Fitch now has 92 touchdowns this year. I'm saying they get 100 this year. You might be right, Mike, and I'll tell you what, eight touchdowns for them on Saturday, they can do it. Who knows? And but defensively, Fitch has made their mark in this game. Their defense has set the tone for the entire game. Two interceptions for touchdowns. 
five interceptions altogether, six interceptions altogether, and just total domination on defense. I think they did, I think they did a great job. You know, just, just a few minutes ago before the uh, quarterback from uh, Pontemont got hit and square up in his chin, you know, there was a backside, it was wide open. They came back again with that same play. And I knew that that cornerback there knew that he was in bad position the first time. <laughs> he was not going to let it happen again. That's why I knew there was going to be an interception. He did a tremendous job running the back, I guess, whatever it was, 100 yards? Or, 102. Oh, 102 yards. Great run. He well, broke on the ball beautifully. Coach, coach, you told me he was going to intercept it, but you didn't say he was going to run it back for a touchdown. So well, I didn't know he had all that speed. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to watch out for him next year. Well, that, that, that's the inferno, Coach. Number 32 is the inferno. He's got to, speed to burn. Well, I'm going to have to call in the fire department on him. <laughs> guess what? Yeah, you can do it the year after because he's only a sophomore. <laughs> well, I, 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 they better be professional firefighters and not volunteers. <laughs> well, that's how we lost. volunteers home for that one, huh, <laughs> 61 to nothing, 5.25 to go. we got Ray Evans with us. Phil Murphy, obviously, with us, the voice you've heard all year. But Ray Evans, Coach St. Bernard, is with us. Sideways kick, and it's... Uh, it's okay. got it, it's Myers, the ball. let's see. It's oh, it. It bounced, it bounced off of uh, number 43, 4, Popperov, right into the hands of the Fitch Falcons. It was a shank kick. He didn't mean to do it that way. No, but it was not intentional. I guess when it's going your way, it's going your way. 49 is James Congelisi, and it bounced right off of him. And Fitch, I think, has six interceptions, two fumb three fumble recovers, nine turnovers. You I guarantee you won't see another 61 and nothing score in any other state semifinal mm, games. You might see it with Bloomfield tonight as much as I love playing field. Fitch needs eight <laughs> touchdowns for 100, Michael. Might be seven after this because they get the ball in the 50, and here they go. All right. Devote a quarterback. Hands off to Walworth. Walworth steps through a guy, steps through another guy. Walworth's going to get six down to about the 44, 45 yard line. Second down about five. And Walworth, he's been running well. He ran a tremendous one into the end zone. He's running well. He's only a sophomore. And this is good for us because if Pomper got the ball, they'd be throwing the pass. Time would be clicking off slowly. Now Fitch is going to keep it on the ground. And I'll tell you something. Winter is here, folks. If you haven't got the storm with windows up yet, put them up because I tell you what, it's cold out there. You know no doubt about it, baby. Let's see what DeVoe does. He's the quarterback, second and five on the 45 of Pomperov. McCraw in motion. He with an interception. McCraw cuts it inside. McCraw carries somebody, being held on. McCraw gets up close to the first down. McCraw got a lot of fight in him. Nice job by McCraw. He knew where that first down marker was. He has to make it to the 40. He saw it. He dove for it. And I believe they gave it to him. Yes, they did. It will be a first down. Four minutes, 35 seconds left to play in the ball game. Fitch leading Popperog 61 to nothing. You know, that's why guys like John McCoy are, are idols to, to little guys like, like R.J. Evans here because he's obviously set the tone. Every running back they have is leaning forward for extra yardage. Walworth with an inside. He's going to be wrapped up. No, he's going to fight forward, carry a couple of people for a couple of yards. Now, the big question is, when I asked the guy the geography question from the Danderbury Times, I said, how far is it from Southbury to here? He said 67 miles. Now, are they going to hit him a point a mile? He said, oh, that, that's the question. I mean, this is all numbers, the numerology and stuff like that. And then again, we're not knocking the Pond Rock kids who have played as hard as No, and especially we're not knocking them because they can't hear our broadcast. But it's still like see the car <laughs> Yeah, but it's not something we would do anyhow because they put out fourth and effort here. They just don't have the guns. They don't have the speed. We can be homies tonight, Mike. That's for sure. Well, we're always homies, unfortunately. Well, we uh, hand off inside to George Hall. George back. Go back. I'm sorry. He's going to come back to about the 36-yard line. And uh, they've been all well, I could see George Hall couldn't run. He was standing right in front of me. So well, we're back, back in there. You know, for, for all the listeners out there, we're really kind of delirious from the cold. Yeah. We, we just want this game to be over. It's 61 to nothing. We're having a good time up here. And we're trying to pass this time along because any one of you knows who's in the listening area that is it extremely cold out here. Yes, it is. It gets cold here. I don't care what the temperatures at West Haven will be cold. Right. Third down. Hand off to McCraw. McCraw's going to get to the outside. McCraw's going to get around the corner. Going to get a great block from uh, Tyler Walworth. And he's down to the 15-yard line. What a block by Walworth. That Excellent. was a beautiful run. Nice cut back after he had the turn. He cut back upfield. Made it in. Fitch has one heater on the sidelines. It's one of them big industrial heaters for construction workers. And I think the biggest fight that Fitch got in tonight was who's going to sit closest to that heat blower out there. <laughs> because they're all trying to get around it. It's Dwayne. Oh, yeah, that's who's next. To the to Wayne. Yeah, he's pretending he's asking questions yeah. when he's just keeping warm. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Fitch on the 15-yard line, 2.30 left to play. 
All right, Walworth with it. Excuse me, Starbuck. Starbuck rushes inside. He's going to get down about three yards. Second down and seven. Starbuck runs so hard. You know, it's on any other team, he'd really be something. Got to tell the guy in the truck to get the thing going back on. Our monitor's not working very well. I food for the press box tonight, and we want to tell Joshua to warm up that limousine because we don't want no comas on our way up to West Haven on Saturday. We're at 1 o'clock. We'll take the air for Fitch against the team to be announced. And we'll end up at Gamble. I know. Hover so. right. We're on our way down. <laughs> I'd hand off to Starbeck again. And Starbuck gets maybe, uh, and this is a thing that Coach Jeremy's trying to do in a lot of part of the Thanksgiving game. Starbuck was a senior. He tried to get him a touchdown late in the game. I think he's trying to get Starbuck a touchdown to stay play. Starbuck a four-year player. You know, it's a shame that Starbuck is a, is a senior. He really is a good player. He'd be a starter for any other team in the conference. Got four touchdowns this year. Playing in reserve ball. When a place like this, Coach Evers, it's important to get everybody in the game right now. Yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, they, everybody, like I said, everybody's been here since the beginning, and they've been working out hard, and it's a good opportunity for everybody to go on the field and be part of this great um, victory to, to, to tonight. Walworth got it. He's got a touchdown. He's going to get maybe down to about the 11-yard line. It's going to be fourth down and maybe about six yards to go. And I'm sure Fitch will just try to run the clock out here and just keep the ball on the ground, see what they do. If they get in the end zone, fine. If not, I don't think Pomperog's going to get another play. A minute left to play in the game. 61 Fitch, zero Pomperog. It has been all Fitch. Pomperog took the opening kickoff back. 60 yards. They almost brought it back for a touchdown. We thought at that second we were in for a dog fight for the entire evening, but since then, it's been all Fitch Falcons. No, dogs don't allow themselves to get whipped this bad. Go, 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 go. McCraw with it. McCraw's going to be stopped. He's going to be short, stopped short of the first down. So what's going to happen is Pop Roy's going to take over maybe two plays, probably two passes. We'll be interested to see who they send in here. Well, you can get off about five passes with 37 seconds left, Mike. But they'll only have four downs to do it, so they'll only be able to get off unless they complete a first down. But in any event, um, it has been all Fitch tonight. Fitch will be playing in the state championship game. Saturday at 1 o'clock we go on the air. Kickoff is slated for 2 p.m. Last year they went five minutes early on us, Mike. That's yep. why we're coming in early because one never knows when you get down there what's going to happen. But we'll have all the action the entire timeout team when we bring that game to you live on WSUB. The oh, only... We got a timeout for Pomperog. And we'll keep it here. We'll talk Let a little me. bit about what's going on, Mike. Well, let's figure this out. If we figure out, we'll do a little perspective. Right now, Raheem Carter is 31-2 and two as the starting quarterback. He's never lost a day game in his career. This year, the championship game is in the daytime. And they'll so. play the winner of the Farmington Holy Cross, Cross game. game. Mm -hmm. um, most people think Farmington is a stronger team. They're undefeated. They're playing Holy Cross at home. Um, most people think it'll be Farmington, but before we said, as we said to begin the top of tonight's broadcast, is that when the playoff starts, throw out the record books. Nothing means nothing because who knows what's going to happen, right, Coach? That's right. You back to zero. Everybody start on a clean slate. That's right. You're going to have two undefeated teams playing in the final, and Farmington's supposed to be pretty good. Animal Cross is supposed to be pretty good. Holy Cross lost one game. Well, he lost to uh, Ansonia. That was their loss. Right hand off to Frazier. Frazier's going to take it to the outside. Frazier's going to be knocked out James of bounds. James Williams stopped him. On about to 28. James and McCraw, Mike, and to tell you what, if James Williams didn't slow him down, Murph, he went the whole way. That goose egg would have been lifted, but we got 29 seconds left to play in the game. Fitch defense wants to keep that shutout intact. They lead 61-0. to zero. Got to be a state playoff record. Mike, have you ever heard of any much more of a lopsided score before in a state playoff game? There's been some with Ansonia, believe me. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they hit the, the blue seven field. Field. Yeah. Didn't take somebody out by that score. But I mean, for two but teams, Cheshire. to two teams as closely matched as these two could have been, this is an amazing score. First team offense is in there. We got Bellacucci. He's going to run. He's going to get up to about the 34 yard line. 22 seconds to go. They still have their first team offense in there. They being uh, Palmer Rogers because Peel is still a quarterback. Nice tackle by Will Ross says he took a little ride but brought the player down. Ten seconds left to play in the game. Nine clocks ticking. That's the last play. That'll be the end of the game. The final score. Fitch 61. Paparog 0. Stay tuned for our post-game report. 
You're listening to the only station for ECC Football 980, WSUB. I want to give props to my
Thank <laughs> you.